In this simple video, we're going to look at how to create a resume workshop flyer like this. Now, now flyers can be used for a wide variety of things, but we're going to cover several major topics in using Microsoft Word to be able to create a simple flyer like this. We're going to look at how to add an image, position and have word wrap around that image, how to copy in text, how to create a title, and create shapes as well as being able to change the colors of our flyer, all with a simple click of a button. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do, since I'm going to start from scratch, is I'm going to come up to my file menu, and I'm going to choose to create a new blank document. So we're starting off looking like this. And I'm just going to put in some text real quick. Resume Workshop. Now, you may be looking at this going, boy, this is really tough to see. It's such a big document in such a small area. So, I'm going to show you a couple ways to fix this really quickly for you. If we come to our View tab, up here in our ribbon bar, we have a couple of options. For example, we can choose to view the document at 100%. This makes it much wider. Now we're going to have to scroll to see stuff towards the bottom, but it makes a whole lot easier for us to read. If this is still difficult for you to read, down on our bottom right hand side, we have a view slider, and we can increase this more or less by simply clicking or dragging as necessary. If we want to go back to see the whole page at one time, on the view tab, we can choose to zoom and select one page and it will bring in the whole page at one time for us. Now that it's at a comfortable size for us to see, let's go ahead and move on to the next thing. First, I'm gonna import all of my content, then I'm gonna go through the process of styling it. So my next thing I wanna do is I wanna insert an image. So I come over here to my Insert tab, Pictures, and I'm gonna choose this device. Previously, I had selected and downloaded a resume image off of a stock photo website, and you can see here that I have my image. And choose Insert, and here's my image. And right now, it's taking up the full size of my screen. I'm going to fix that in just a few minutes. I come to After the Image, click the Enter key, and I have some text to use. Now, you might be looking going, what is this? This does not look like normal text. Well, this is known as lorem ipsum text. And lorem ipsum text is, to us, basically just gibberish. The design is that we're not looking at what's being said. We just want to make sure that it flows. And this is good for a placeholder text because it mimics the English language very closely. Now, if you have text that's already ready to be used, go ahead and insert that. But I'm going to take this text from Notepad, Control A to select everything, Control C to copy it, and then I'm going to come into my Word document and paste this. You notice that my text is not wrapping around my image. My image is taking up way too much space. So let's work on fixing these elements real quick. So I'm going to select my image. And you'll notice on the top right hand side, I have some layout options. So I'm going to first select my image and then I want to resize it. I'm going to click on the resizing handle in the bottom right hand side of my image. Now, if you drag from a corner, you notice that it's resizing the image proportionally. If I select a resizing handle from either the side or the top and bottom, then it will distort my image. Now my text is still not wrapping around my image. To change that, I'm gonna click on the little box in the upper right hand side that says Layout Options. And right now you can see that inline with text is selected. Well, I can choose a variety of these. I might choose Square. And when I choose Square, notice that my text now wraps around in the shape of a square. I can choose through 
And because I have a transparent background, anywhere where it thinks that there's no real image, it will start to put my text. I can choose behind text, which makes me now use this kind of as like a watermark. Tight, which is very similar to the through, except if there is a hollow section in the center where it's concave, it won't display. That's the one difference between through and tight. For our example, we're going to choose square. Now, if I need to adjust the size of my image in any way, I can once again go ahead and adjust to make this fit appropriately. Now, one thing to keep in mind is if I want to know how big something is, I can go and look off to my left hand side and see my ruler and try to make adjustments that way. I can also come up to my top and notice when my image is selected, I have picture tools and format as an option. Now, if I choose format, I get a lot of different abilities automatically given to me. For example, my right hand side, I can choose my height and width and set those implicitly to be a specific size. I can crop my image. So if there's part of an image that I don't need, I can remove it. I can align my image and I can even put different styles on. If I hover over these styles, you can see what it does. Now, while a lot of people like using styles, I do want to kind of caution you. Some of these are interesting, but they can become overwhelming if they're used too often or not used correctly. So just be careful of something like that. I'm going to choose to align my image to the right and notice that it moves it automatically to the right hand side. I can also drag and move and notice that when I'm aligning with an element or the side of my page, I'm going to get some green lines. So I have a lot of flexibility in there. My text actually had an extra space in there, so I'm just going to go up there and remove that. I want to update this resume workshop. This is supposed to be a title that's going to grab your attention, but right now it's the same size as the rest of my text. So I want to make it bigger and really make it pop so it stands out. So I'm going to select this text because anything I select is going to be modified. On my home tab, I'm going to select text effects and typography. If I click on the drop down button, you'll notice I have some ready made effects that I can choose from. I also can affect the individual things that make them up, such as adding outlines, shadows, glows, etc. I'm going to choose the bottom left hand example, which if you notice, if you hover over it, it's going to tell you what the information is. Now, if I look at my text, it looks a little bit different, but it's still really small. So I'm going to come in here to my little drop down for my font size, and I'm going to choose a bigger font, 48 in this example. I like to pick from the ready-made font sizes. A lot of times they are designed to work specifically with this. I can also type into the font size to get a specific font size if I want to. And now I want to center this on the top of my page. So under my paragraph section, I'm going to choose center. And now I see resume workshop. It stands out. I have my text. I have an image that helps grab my attention. This looks nice. Now I could go in and make one more modification if I want to have something to help grab my attention. I'm going to select resume workshop and under my font section, I'm going to choose font color. I'm going to come over here and choose across the top, my green or accent six. Now that I choose Accent 6, I get a green color, which kind of matches the background of my resume icon that I picked. Now all we need to do is put our information at the bottom so people know where to attend. If you go back to our example here, you'll notice that we had a rounded rectangle that helped it stand out. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to come to Insert and Shapes. 
I'm going to choose rounded rectangle. I'm just going to draw this where I want it. So you notice that right now it's blue and my top is green. And so I want to make these match. So what I'm going to do is with my rounded rectangle selected, I'm going to come up to my ribbon bar, choose the format tab, which right now is already selected because I just selected my rounded rectangle and choose fill shape. And I'm going to choose the same green shape outline. I'm going to come and I'm going to choose just a little bit darker green like so. Inside my rounded rectangle, I'm just going to start typing. William Center, Tuesdays at 10 a.m., room 210. Now, right now, this is kind of small, and it gets lost easily. So I'm going to select my text, go to my Home tab, and increase my font size. Now it can be seen. If I go to my View tab, and now View is one page, you see that I have a lot more information it's a lot easier to see. I can still make some adjustments and resize things. So for example, I might take my text and just hit the enter key a couple times. So it's a little more centered. And then I can take my text box and drag it up just a little bit. Now, if I come in and say, you know what, this green color is nice, but it doesn't really fit for what we want. I'm going to show you how to change this real quick. And come here to my design tab. And you notice I have a bunch of themes and other things like that already picked. Well, I'm going to come all the way down to my colors. And by default, we're using what's known as the office color scheme. But I can pick others. So I might pick a green, a red orange, violet, or any of these others. And these are all built in and designed to work with the system. So if I only have, for example, a black and white printer, I want to see how is it going to work. I could choose grayscale. And then all I have to do is change my image. On the other hand, I could choose another color scheme that's going to help it stand out by being a bright color. This is all up to you and how you want to define the way it works. So the last thing I want to point out is all these little red squigglies that we have. Now, typically we want to fix our spelling mistakes. And that's what the red squiggly is there to show you is that there's a spelling mistake. But since this isn't really a spelling mistake, or sometimes things like names and places are not caught because they're proper names and they may not be in the spell checker. I'm going to show you real quick how we can see to make sure that, that little red squiggly isn't going to appear when we go to print this out. I'm going to choose my file tab, print, and now I get a print preview. This is what it's going to look like if I go and print. Notice that all the squiggly lines and stuff like that have all disappeared. Microsoft Word has already warned you about the improper spellings. Now it's just a matter of can you go do this on your own. So this is just real quick how this process works for you. If I want to share this document to verify that it's what I need, Maybe I can send it via email. And this will save the document and send it as an attachment. Likewise, I can send as a PDF for review if you have Adobe PDF installed. Or I can come to export and I can create an Adobe PDF there and then share the PDF. That way it can't be changed. This is great if I want to like email it out to a bunch of people. I want to make sure people don't change things and go, oh, what my flyer said it gives you a way to lock that down just a little bit easier. If I want to go back, I'll just use my left arrow and I'm back right where I left off. That's how I can create a simple flyer in Microsoft Word in just a few minutes.